All right, today we're going to do a video on how to change the uh, upper control arms on a 1991 Dodge B250. This fan's got a 3,300 pound front axle. If you can see in the video here, it's got a pretty good lean on the driver's side. It's about an inch and a half lower than the passenger side. The van is heavier on the, the driver's side, but it's becoming a problem. And I'm also, there's something is worn out or broken in the suspension. We're getting some pretty heavy wear on the outer edges of the tires. It could be uh, an alignment issue, but I don't believe so because uh, I drove it across uh, eastern Canada recently and it's uh, got a number of things wrong with it, so I wanted to get that fixed up. Let's do a quick walk around of the vehicle. This is a road track conversion. We've got some uh, tools laid out here on the other side, so we'll go through them quick. So we're going to paint the uh, undercarriage and the wheel wells. So I got some trim clad semi gloss black and some gloss uh, gray, some cheap paint brushes. I use some just some gloves when I'm working with the paint. I've got a hammer. I've got three different kinds of uh, ball joint and tie rod breakers here. I've used uh, this one here. I took the steering box uh, linkage off recently to do some adjustment on that, and it worked there. But I'm concerned that it might not fit everywhere, so I've got a, a little guy here and then a, a bigger Pitman arm puller. I've got a uh, CarQuest kit here for the uh, calipers on the front. They're making a lot of noise. I'm missing some parts. How this goes together, I'm not too sure. But i got the factory service manual, so I'll probably figure it out. It's got some rubber bands, then there's uh, two different parts here, and then new fasteners. I like CarQuest parts. They generally aren't the cheapest stuff out there. Got a 3 8 and a 3 quarter inch drive impact guns. The 3 quarter inch I use down at uh, the half inch adapter. This is a, uh, a snap-on type uh, Williams uh, reducer and it's getting ready to break off. But I got a spare just in case. Got a hearing protection. I got my glasses on already. Got a, a half inch drive impact set. When you buy one of these, check to make sure it's got all of the parts in it. This one starts I think at uh, 11 and goes up to 24. It skips some of the sizes that are not used but you need to have one that has an 18. If it doesn't have an 18 in the set don't buy it. There's probably going to be a lot of stuff missing that you're going to need along the way. And uh, also got a, a 3 8 drive set. Again this is a pretty uh, complete set. It goes up to 3 quarter inch. That one's made by SunX. I like their tools quite a bit. We've got AC Delco professional line upper control arms. I would have liked to get the uh, Moog control arms. The only problem is they have two styles and uh, don't buy the cheap style because they will not last. I couldn't get all four control arms in their good style so I went with AC Delco professional. The uh, uppers, the rubber parts are made by a company called SH and they're from China. I'm hoping that that's not a, a warning sign for uh, the vehicle that, that it's going to be garbage parts because uh, I'd like to do this once and forget about it. You adjust your alignment by moving these uh, nuts back and forth. You can move the uh, shaft to touch there so I'm going to have to do some figuring out how that works. I've got the uh, long bar there. On some of them you'll find that their ends are crimped on. This one it's kind of nice, it's just one piece. It's uh, the expensive Moog stuff. Again, I don't buy the cheap Moog parts because they're garbage. I got uh, two sets of tie rod ends. I got this from Rock Auto and I think that they resell a lot of uh, bankrupt company parts. So it comes in all kinds of random boxes of different ages. Some stuff is new. Some stuff is really old. Then I've got the uh, idler arms. I'm not sure if there's a problem with these on the vehicle or not, but figured if I'm going to do this much work, just refresh everything and uh, keep the van going. So I got the uh, springs there and the lower control arms for another video. I don't have all of the parts to do that right now, so we'll just do two separate videos. Got a couple of manuals in the van. I like the road check conversions because they've got uh, the kitchen in them, so you got a fridge, microwave, hood, gas top and then there's a little bathroom in here so that's pretty cool so I got the Haynes manual I bought this initially Haynes is alright but if you're gonna get into some of the harder stuff 
you would probably want to buy a, a factory manual. And in the end, there's so many of these manuals floating around now, because the vans aren't that popular. They're not very expensive, so I bought a, a used manual here. So I just flipped through the uh, front suspension section quickly. They use these suspensions on vehicles for probably 30 years. So you might think oh, this is for a van, but it, it works on a lot of different stuff. It talks about uh, how to do the alignment. So uh, let's give you a glimpse into how this uh, book is laid out in case you decide you want to buy it. Some troubleshooting details. Some equipment there for doing uh, a wheel alignment. Kind of how the uh, the lower control arm goes on with the uh, strut arm. And uh, sway bar bits and pieces. I need to figure out how the front calipers go. I'm sure that's going to be in here somewhere. So like I said, I'm not going to do the lower control arms in this video, but I might as well show you how it all works. I'm not sure what that's about. Some kind of special tool for something. They show a different kind of puller here. But uh, I'm kind of concerned that this style might pop open and slip, so I didn't uh, buy one of those. And some torque details. I'll take a quick look at that there. Keep that up for a bit. So uh, yeah, one of the things I want to do is paint uh, parts of the vehicle. So the cross member is quite hard to replace. If you see that, you need to lift the engine and take off the whole suspension to replace it. So I want to paint it with uh, the trim clad there. And the one thing you'll notice is that if you have anything poking through the paint, mine's pretty rusty, it'll continue to rust. So you got to get the paint on in enough layers and thick enough that nothing is poking through the paint. Once you encapsulate it, you should be pretty good. So I'm just going to get the vehicle up in the air. I should have mentioned that. So uh, I got a three and a half ton jack. I'm going to lift it by the front cross member. Probably too dark to see it at the moment, but uh, it's all that jack can do is to lift up the front of the vehicle. So I'm going to use uh, four jack stands as part of that. I actually had a coworker that uh, was killed when the vehicle fell on him. So just make sure you use your jack stands and make sure you got the weight of the vehicle on the jack stands and it's not kind of just tottering, teetering on the, uh, the jack. Because if it, the jack slips, you want the weight to be on the jack stands already. You don't want it to just be a case of luck that you catch the, the vehicle without it falling on top of you. So anyway, we'll get uh, the vehicle up in the air and we'll start ripping it apart. Alright, so we'll take off the uh, driver's side wheel here. Take a look at what I've got going on so far and then we'll start taking apart the uh, passenger side. is you put the wheel underneath of the frame. In this case, it's up pretty far, so it's not gonna help a lot, but uh, still, I like to do it as a last defense. So I've gone through and taken off most of the cotter pins of the vehicle. The problem with this vehicle, you'll see, is it's 27 years old, and all of the uh, rubber has gone bad. Bad rubber up on the upper control arms. It's pretty much everywhere. I've had to change the engine mounts already it is just uh, that's the general problem with uh, vehicles of this age so take a look at the uh, front suspension here you see the uh, sway bar sway bar link outer tie rod you see springs I'm actually putting in bigger springs you'll see that in the next video this vehicle bottoms out quite a bit it's right at the maximum for its weight capabilities which I'll show you in a second there's a the rear strut bar this one, uh, the bushing is probably good. I painted this a while ago, and you can see that the, nothing has changed here, but on the other side, there's uh, some dirt. If you ever see uh, wheel lugs that have rust bleeding out of them, especially on transport trucks, that usually means that they're loose. So uh, just keep a lookout for uh, anomalies like that when you're working on a vehicle. Yeah. So 
see if we can get a shot of this or not. Let's take the camera off here quick. Just a bit stuck on here, bear with me. There we go. Alright, so like I said, I used four jacks. So I got a couple on the uh, frame horns up at front. Can't really see through the screen at the moment. Hopefully you're seeing what I'm trying to show you. There's uh, lots of parts on the suspension on this vehicle. I think that's part of the problem when it gets this old. There's just so many parts and they're all within spec, but when you put them all together, you got a lot uh, of movement still. Had the oil pan out a little while ago, decided to paint it. The uh, oil pan gasket was falling apart and falling into the oil pan. So I thought I had a chunk of motor stuck in there, but it just ended up being a uh, part of the gasket was stuck in the uh, drain plug. See, I got two more jacks here, so the vehicle's good and steady. It's not going to move. Take a look at the uh, tools. Lots of cotter pins. That's a whole video on its own just to show you how to take care of potter, cotter pins. So I got a 7 8 or uh, 13 16 use that to hold a few things inch and an eighth for the uh, big uh, parts on the pivot bar I think that's what they call it it was 15 sixteenths for the uh, top pivot bar parts half inch for uh, this guy here three quarter for part of the uh, uh, retainer part there and then uh, seven eighths for most of the ball joints so just uh, put the camera back on the mount. We'll take this off. It's always important that when you're working on something, you get access to it. Otherwise, just spend twice the amount of time doing a job just because you're fighting with other stuff that's in the way. Yeah, so let's stick this back on. Bear with me. I do not edit my videos. I just splice them together so you get whatever you get. Hopefully it's uh, valuable to you. Yeah, so it's got like an upholstery remover type gadget here. You can try to avoid damaging anything. These vehicles have been long out of production. You'll never get new parts, so you have to get old parts. Uh, for the dealer only stuff. Chrysler has really cut back on what they support. You can see I got a, a new alternator in there. It's been a big year for parts. This thing is becoming a bit of a money pit to be honest at 27 years old. But if I was going to replace it I'd probably buy a Sprinter and the Sprinter road track is over $100,000 so I could probably afford it if I wanted to but I like the old vehicles so keep it on the road. Oh yeah, I've got a jack underneath of the uh, lower control arm. If you don't do that, you'll find uh, that the tension of the spring is going to shoot it all apart when you take this ball joint apart. Well, that's what I think in theory anyway. I've never done a job like this. But uh, if it does, it's better just to be uh, prepared to hold it all together. So. Do an old suspension. I washed the, the vehicle off last night to try to get as much garbage out of here as possible because it's also nice to have a clean vehicle when you're working on it. Just undoing the uh, tie rod end adjuster retainers. So unfortunately my camera mount may not be able to go low enough for you to see me taking everything apart. So you might find that I jump ahead here, but hopefully not.
a lot of components for the suspension. That's a little guy. So I guess three quarter inch. This part here. That's an idler arm. Not really familiar with uh, this part of the suspension. I've not worked on too many of them. Seven eighths for the other part of the other arm, and uh, 15 sixteenths for the top. Just gotta do the upper ball joint. Then we'll start uh, try to pop in these joints apart. You can see something with the camera. I can't see the screen. Let's see. My gut one's a little bit bigger. Just an important note. So the uh, 3,300 pound axle, and from videos I've seen from other people, they all the axles have the same upper control arm, but the ball joints are different. So you want to make sure that you've got the right ball joints before you rip it all apart. So you can probably compare the uh, nut off of there and see if it threads onto the new one. And if it does, then you should be good to go. Yeah, I got 15 sixteenths here. Nothing on here is very tight. Which is nice. This is a summer only vehicle so it doesn't have a horrible amount of rust on it. Although it will look different to some of the vehicles in the US. They don't rust at all. Which is pretty nice. There. So let's try this on the other the new ball joint. Alright, so the uh, nut fit on the new ball joint, so I'm hoping that that means it's the same size uh, taper and everything. If not, I guess we'll be. Uh, find that out later on in the video. So now I'm just going to start uh, popping the uh, joints apart. I guess I'll just try to whack them with a hammer first and if that doesn't work then we will proceed to different methods. Alright, I don't know if you can see that or not but it popped off a uh, outer tie rod no problem. Try to get the uh, inner. I should have marked these with uh, paint. Actually, I'm going to do that right now. Mark my outers. Otherwise, you get the uh, threads mixed up. I'll be back in a second. All right. So you can see I read. Uh, put a bit of red paint here and a bit on the outer off to keep the uh, left and right separated. But uh, that's uh, important to keep them uh, so the ends are the same. Whereas if you have to go and change a ball joint and you got the thread backward, you may end up ordering the wrong part. So I uh, just try to keep them organized. Is there breaking the rest of these parts apart? I don't know if I can get a swing on this or not. Nope, I'm gonna end up damaging the uh, brake line. Let's come back to that later. Off, 
this is not going to be as easy. I'll have to go after it later. Alright, got this off. Then you probably need a puller to get the other end off, which I'll show that to you later. fuel filter a little bit. This is what got it out of the way. Come on now. That's a success. I guess we'll get a, a pull it out and see what we can figure out here. Check the camera angle. Yeah, so we're going to use uh, three different styles of pullers here to see what we can get on to the end of this link here. So we got the, uh, the little one, big one, and then this guy here. Let's see uh, what we can fit on. I don't think the little one's going to fit right over there. Resort to the pickle fork. Let's go get that. Take a sec. So if I knew I was going to use the pickle fork, I probably would have left some of this attached so that we have something to hit against. We'll see how this goes. I'm really hoping not to use this thing. Starting to get it in there.
starting to get a little bit tired. To take a second, look this over. And success. Alright, so the uh, driver's side will be all the same sort of thing. I guess we'll try to work on that ball joint now. Take a bit away to the vehicle. That's the big ball joint tool there. Really gonna fit in there very well. Let's see it with this thing. Ah, maybe. It's just a little, almost a little short. get over the end of the stud. Yes, we're back to the pickle fork again. So if you're going to try to reuse these parts, this will probably be a bit of an issue. step is going to be to try to break off the uh, 15 to 16. There's a captive nut underneath of these. So we need to use a bar to get them going. Hopefully we can switch to a ratchet. Actually pretty loose. I'm going to try to mark where their location is with the here. I don't know if this is of value or not, but I give it a shot. You can see the red marks I put there. Try to keep the alignment reasonable for when I drive to the alignment shop.
Okay, so there's your control arm. If you were to rebuild this, you'd have to uh, push out these bushings here somehow and uh, reuse the components. But I'm concerned something is bent in my suspension, so I'm just going to replace everything in one shot. This is the, uh, the top of the shock. If you're going to be doing the lower control arm, this would be a great time to take the, uh, the shocks uh, apart. Otherwise, uh, you got to reach from the other side, and it's a bit of a hassle. So I think what we're going to do next is uh, just verify that the other ball joint fits onto here. I'm going to clean everything up, and I'm going to paint a lot of the parts. So the next time we come back, uh, I think we'll probably have it going back together. Okay, I'm just doing a bit of test fitting on the ball joint. So it turns out the AC Delco professional parts that I bought are designed for a 3,300 pound axle. And uh, another thing I wanted to talk about was getting the alignment set up for the uh, upper control arm. So you can move this bar back and forth. So you need to do a bit of measuring uh, with respect to different components to try to get the uh, centers of these holes in the correct location so that uh, you're close so you're not doing some weird rubbing while you drive to the alignment shop. And then you'll tighten these up uh, once you get them in the right position. Alright, so for removing the center link, you could use a pickle fork here, but I'm going to use the, uh, the breaker. I've used it in this location in the past, so I know it's going to work. It might be the only place you can actually use uh, one of these tools. I would like to show its use. Because I think they're pretty handy. I don't like using the pickle fork, it just because it destroys whatever you're pounding on. And we'll take a look at the difference between these center links. This one is a, I guess you call it a three piece. Some people think you can service these, but it's not serviceable. It's just one piece. So you can see how it pops off. It looks like it's uh, threaded, but uh, it's being swaged on there pretty hard. You're not going to really get it. Try to get up off the ground and look at the uh, replacement. So you can see that uh, the high-end Moog is one solid piece. It's not a hollow bar. So we'll just take a look at the, uh, the tie rod. We're working on that right now. Just going to start to spin this apart. Just use a pipe wrench. Just notice that the orientation of the parts are off by 90 degrees. So just count your turns on your way out and you're on your way in. And you should be pretty close. So I'm going to paint this again like I talked about uh, once I get it all together. Is, uh, the joints are all just bare metal as well. Alright, so I got the uh, one tie rod end changed. I have to admit to something embarrassing here. I've gotten 10 turns on this tie rod where I realized that it was going in the wrong direction. Of course, it's got the opposite threads on this end. So uh, keep that in mind. So uh, whatever it is, I'm going to have to add 10 to it. It was 28 on the one side. I assume that the other side is going to be similar to 28. And I'll show you how you can find out what the uh, rating is on your front axle if you still have the original hood on it. So the uh, sticker here goes over a number of things like your transmission and uh, your uh, axle there, 3300 pounds, your gear ratio. It also shows you uh, what you had for springs initially. So uh, I had the SJH front springs, which are the uh, thinner diameter coil springs. So I'm going to be putting in the heavier diameter. Alright, so it ended up being uh, 24 on the, uh, the outer tie rod end instead of 28. So they're not completely uh, lined up with each other. I just transferred my red mark over from the, uh, the adjustment shaft over to the tie rod end so I can paint that black now. Alright, so I've been working on the suspension here for a while on the van. I just wanted to show you a little update as to how things are going. So for the uh, idler arms, the uh, grease fittings are going into cast iron, so you'll find out you can't quite bottom them out. They'll get snug enough that uh, it goes in pretty tight. There's some foam washers that come with this kit and some instruction that how to use them. It's pretty uh, self-explanatory, but uh, you just have to stick them in there where they belong. Painted the uh, front suspension. All right, I wanted to provide a bit of an update. So when I was talking a minute ago there, the uh, battery died in the camera. I was just showing you the idler arms at that point. I've got the idler arms in now. I really struggled with it. Whoever put in the last pair 
didn't have the washers on either side of them where it goes into the uh, frame and uh, I've ruined uh, three of them of the bolts trying to get them lined up I've been using the uh, bar there to try to straighten everything and get it to fit well but really uh, spent quite a bit of time trying to figure that out but uh, I did get the uh, frame painted it's mostly a unibody van but I painted uh, the frame that sticks out here at the front then uh, painted the uh, wheel wells. I think that turned out pretty good. Do another coat of that whenever I get an opportunity to. And uh, so the upper control arms are just in kind of loose right now. So I just have to zoom there. I've got the uh, tie rods on. Not a big deal doing those. Like I said, the other arm is just killing me. So I gotta go and find some fasteners there for tomorrow. <clears throat> Try to show you a bit of the uh, undercarriage here. Really struggled with the uh, tripod as well. Didn't work out at all. So when I was working, I wanted to start working on the driver's side, so I had to move my jack. And uh, so I ended up having to use a fifth jack stand to do this. I've got a lot of jack stands because I'm trying to rebuild the car on the other side of things here. So I just stuck the uh, jack stand underneath of the strut bar as close as I could to the uh, lower control arm so I wouldn't bend the bar. Anyway, that worked out pretty good. So as I was talking about the either arms, I think that's part of what my uh, front end problems were. Missing those washers, the either arms are probably moving around quite a bit. So I painted the uh, center link and the uh, whatever the other part is there. There the bird's going. Again, same on this side, painted things up. For whatever reason, the uh, driver's side of this vehicle has got a bit more rust on the front, and then a little bit more rust on the back on the passenger side. Don't really follow what's going on there. But again, just got this kind of loosely in position. But uh, I think it's been a pretty good uh, day. It actually took about six hours to get this far. I had to stop. It rained a couple times today. But kind of got things as clean as I could. So uh, we'll be getting back to this in about a, a day after tomorrow. Where I'm going to finish putting on the, uh, the brake parts there. Try to do the alignment up and get the, the wheels back on. Get the idler arm, that idler arm there, missing a bolt, I gotta get it. one tomorrow. And uh, after that I guess I'll probably just leave the van sort of like this, put the wheels on so it's not dangerous to anybody. And uh, whenever I get an opportunity I'm going to change the lower control arms and put in the springs, which I, as I mentioned are going to be a heavier spring. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see if uh, this works out or not. Alright, just before we wrap up today here. I was talking earlier about uh, how you can tell if a bolt is loose or something like that on a wheel or what have you. So if you look at the, uh, the end of the strut bar, you can see that there's a lot of uh, dust all around it. So that dust is there because things are moving and vibrating. Otherwise, if it was all tight, then uh, it would be like the other side and it would be fully painted over. So like I said, that's one way you can uh, diagnose if something is loose.